My name is Brad Robson, I'm the man area manager for RSPB. Curlews were once an incredibly widespread and common breeding bird of farmland in Fermanagh, and predominantly in hay meadows um, and in species rich grassland. But um, so since the 1980s, and where there's a, a survey of the whole of Northern Ireland undertaken in the mid 80s, and that estimated a population of around 5,000 pairs of curlews across Northern Ireland. Um, and unfortunately, the most recent estimates from 2013 suggest that there's somewhere between about 250 and 725 pairs of curly left in Northern Ireland. And I think the evidence really suggests it's probably at the lower end of that scale. Um, Fermanagh is incredibly important for curlews. Um, on the nature reserve here on Lower Loch Erne, we had 44 pairs last year. And the population across the whole of the county is probably somewhere around 100 pairs. Um, so they're in a really desperate situation and that's in excess of an 80% decline uh, since the mid-1980s. I've just landed on Muckinish Island on the Lower Loch Erne Islands RSPB Reserve in County Fermanagh. This is my 17th year of undertaking breeding wader surveys on the islands across the reserve. So we're going to walk across the island and record all of the, not just the breeding waders that we see, but everything else as well. Um, but hopefully we'll see um, a couple of pairs of curlews as we go. Last year there were two pairs on here. The most we've ever had are four. Um, so anything above two would be great. Uh, so we wait and see. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is our predator-proof fence. It's um, what's called a um, solar-powered combination style fence. So you can see it has sheet netting on it, and then it has two strands of electric, which are all powered by a single um, solar panel. And uh, in this case, it's used here on the island because um, badgers moved onto this island a number of years ago. And so we use the fence to separate the badgers uh, from the main area where breeding waders tend to nest because Badgers are omnivorous, um, they're very, very good at finding uh, the nests of ground nesting birds, and so they'll, if they have access to them, do tend to eat the eggs and, and the young of any, any birds. Um, so yes, we installed this a number of years ago, and it's been very successful, and the badgers do stay on their side of the fence, allowing the birds to nest on the ground on the other side. Uh, yeah, so this morning's been quite quiet. Uh, we've seen five curlews occasionally displaying but being rather inactive um, it's probably um, a little bit early in the season they're not going to be laying eggs for another couple of weeks or so yet um, the weather's not so fantastic it's not too cold but there's uh, a lot of cloud and you can just tell that they're a little bit listless and not kind of really particularly excited uh, so we go across to the next island, we're going to go to Roscoe Island and I expect there'll be quite a bit more activity when we get across there. Yes, we're on Roscoe Island, which is um, a small six hectare island at the very western end of Lower Loch Erne. And um, it's quite a diverse island. We've walked around there over the past of half an hour or so and saw uh, looks like two pairs of curlews, um, quite a number of red shank, uh, two pairs of lapwing, um, four common sandpipers, two pairs of oyster catchers, uh, as well as nesting Canada geese as you can hear in the background and found a couple of nests of breeding mallard. So yeah I know things are looking really quite nice. I'd hope that uh, some of the curlew that are calling from over on the mainland um, just off to the north of here might also settle here so we may end up with, I don't know, two to four pairs of curlew on here, hopefully by the end of the season. What are the major threats they're facing? Um, well, at the biggest scale really it is land use change. It's a change in a pattern of agriculture, um, particularly around um, the loss of hay meadows and um, I suppose a bit like corn crakes, curlews did very well in hay meadows that were cut late. It gave the birds the opportunity to rear their young and fledge before uh, the grass was cut. And of course through 
given the state of the weather that we have these days, it is no surprise that people change and cut for silage, but um, yeah, early cutting of silage really is not compatible with ground nesting birds in those fields. And so it's, it's really, it's as simple as that. So the birds become increasingly confined to those few areas that are not cut um, during the breeding season. What's the general trend now that you're focusing on curlews more? Is the trend going in the right direction or is it kind of a losing battle? Uh, well, we, we've had some success here on the nature reserve. So in the, in the 19 years that I've been here in Fermanagh, um, the population declined from 60 pairs down to 34 pairs. Um, but then with some targeted management from 2011 onwards, our population started to increase from 34 and we got back up to 47 pairs. We have demonstrated that curlew will respond to appropriate habitat management. Um, and uh, there, is, there are opportunities to increase the scale of, you know, we, what we do on the nature reserve is really just to find out what the birds need and what can be done. And the next step really is to roll that out into, into the wider countryside. And I still think that Fermanagh supports um, probably somewhere in the region of 50% of Northern Ireland's curlew. Um, I estimate the population is somewhere around 100 pairs. So with ourselves in the area of um, the Antrim Glens, Glen Wirri in particular, they probably have a similar number, and I'd say those two areas combined are well in excess of 90% of Northern Ireland's breeding curlew. Why do you like them, Doug? Uh, well, I think they're very charismatic birds. You know, they have a fantastic call, and they're very big birds. You know, I think maybe we're more used to just being used to seeing our garden birds, which are, tend to be quite small. Um, you know, the song is very evocative. It's been referred to by authors and poets um, over over many centuries. They're very charismatic species.